This time I wanted to discuss very quickly the rad carousel control for wind forms. Usually when you think of a carousel control you're going to think a lot more along the lines of Silverlight or WPF if you're uh, going to add that sort of functionality to an application. Telerik offers a very robust and very useful uh, carousel control for wind forms. So let me go ahead and get started by creating a new wind forms application. And here we go. So we've got our form here. I'm just going to extend that out a little bit so we have a little more real estate to work with and start that up in the center of the screen. Next I'm going to uh, grab my rad carousel and drop it onto my form and then I just want to dock that to the center of the screen. So I'm going to make it fill and there you go. Now the first thing you'll probably notice are this ellipse here in the center of the carousel and the arrows along the bottom. This is called the carousel path, this ellipse right here, and uh, this is the path that the items you add to the carousel will follow. You can actually move this around inside the carousel, like there, so you can move that path, or you can change the uh, path by moving the V and the U, there's the U and the V, there's the V, and I can actually make it much more uh, of a slender uh, type look or extend that out. And those are all handled, again, under the carousel path uh, property. So there, there's a number of different values here you can set. Initial angle and final angle allow you to work more from the circular perspective. So if I put a 0 and, and 360 here, it's just saying it's a full circle and so forth. But U and V, uh, U and V here, are going to be probably the one, things you use most as you're working with uh, maneuvering different items along the path. The buttons are called Button Previous and Button Next, and you can actually interact directly with them if you'd like. Uh, you can set their visibility to on or, or to visible or hidden or collapsed, and you can also move them around the screen. So you don't have to have them on the carousel, or, or you can move them if you do want them in the carousel. You can move them to the top or vertically on the left or on the right and so forth. So you do have some power around those buttons. You can also change the styling and, and look and feel of those as well. But let's go ahead and add some items to our carousel so we can get a feel for what, what, what we can do and how quickly we can get set up. So here you'll see I actually have a variety of different things available for me to add to the carousel. I can add buttons, uh, checkboxes, radio buttons, and images as well. This is really useful because I don't necessarily have to just have a bunch of pictures on my carousel. I can actually make it more interactive and more functional uh, than just an image. Uh, so let me go ahead for now. I'm just going to add some buttons and a checkbox. We'll just add those. So we've got four different things, and you'll see that nice animation when you're uh, loading up. That's, that's useful. And, and you can just get that feel of they're going to follow that path uh, whenever you're at runtime. So let's go ahead and see that in action. So I'm going to run it, and if I come down here and click, you'll see that that checkbox just got checked, and I can check it and uncheck it. Uh, but if I click on an item, it'll just rotate around, and uh, so forth. So everything will flow along the path that was previously defined. I can, again, use those arrow keys to move things around, uh, backward or forward. Okay? So very minimal effort. I've just got a nice carousel, and if I had images or things like that, I could, I could use those here um, and, and have a really nice, clean-looking interface. But this is WinForms, and uh, minimal effort to build that. The next thing I wanted to show you is the Z index. So let me come back over here to Carousel Path. Z scale, excuse me. Z scale, and what Z scale does is currently I've got this 3D look of my uh, ellipse, but you can't really tell that the checkbox is bigger than this button element. Maybe you can tell a little bit, but I'm going to make it much more pronounced, and I'm just going to say 100 here. So now when I run this, if I run that, you'll see that it's going to look much more 3D. So the things that are up close are going to be very large, and the things that are far away are going to be smaller. So that perspective is there that you're actually working in 3D. And if I click on this button element, you'll see that those those scale up as they flow through. So it, it really gives you much uh, more of a look and feel of how you want this to flow. And, and, and it allows you a lot of power as far as how you want things to look. So Z scale is, is really useful. Let me go ahead and change that back to 500. 
and uh, we'll leave that there. So the next thing I wanted to show you is you can actually change this carousel path quite easily. The uh, carousel path has all these properties underneath it, but I can also just come over here to this drop down and click it. And currently it's set to ellipse, but I can change it to bezier. And now you see my items all loaded up along the, si the, the bezier path. And I'm going to click there, and you'll see that they're going to flow through. And uh, let me click here, and then they plop over to that side. Additionally, I don't know if you've picked up on the fact that there is actually a reflection for the carousel items. Here's a really good example. You can see it better on this checkbox. You get this uh, reflection automatically generated for you. You don't have to put any effort into that. It's automatically there. So if you have a nice picture of a uh, marble or something like that, you'll have that nice reflection. And uh, I'll give you a quick example of how you can, or of what we've got uh, for a demonstration application using a carousel here in a minute. But you get a good feel for how to get this set up easy and, and quickly. Uh, it's not very difficult to work with and it's definitely useful inside of your application. So let me show you very quickly a more uh, visual look and feel of using the carousel and I'm just going to click on this in the uh, quick start framework that we offer and there you saw all those uh, images load up and now they're just rotating and they're rotating on their own. I can click them to stop it uh, or I can just click the arrows and have them moving along and so forth. You can change the direction that they're going to flow in, you can change the uh, auto looping and so forth. So this just gives you a feel for how you can use that to make it something really look nice nice uh, as far as visually. Note those reflections I mentioned earlier, there's a really nice reflection of all these different images automatically generated for us. So here I wanted to start up the uh, music example that we've got in the Quick Start Framework just to show you another example of how you can work with the Rad Carousel uh, with images and again you've got these nice reflections and so forth. So this gives you a good idea of getting started with the red carousel and I hope you find this helpful in your uh, daily routine.